Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Deepa Robbins from Designs by D and today I have my first post of 2022 for you. So I actually took a bit of a long break this Christmas and just spent time, quality time with the family and it was a nice break and now I'm completely refreshed and ready to go with a lot more cards to show you guys. So for the beginning of this year, I have some beautiful geode or faux geode inspired cards that I'm going to be making for you. So I did this by using alcohol inks and I think the most important part of this was the brass pinata alcohol ink. This is really nice and it is equivalent to the Tim Holtz um, not the mixatives, but the alloys. So the mixatives mix, you want the alloys that are going to sit on top of those beautiful colors and create this beautiful um, tone of metallic color. So let's go ahead and get started. Of course, we're doing alcohol inking. So we're going to be needing Yupo paper. I'm using five by seven and four and a half, sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half. Now you'll also need some IPA, which is at least 90%, and that Pinata Brass Alcohol Ink. Now, in order to use those, you're going to need some pipettes or something, or maybe a squeeze bottle or something you can put those into. And then these are the colors that I'm going to be using. I've got Stream, Sailboat, Blue, and Amethyst. And because this is 2020, sorry, 2022, <laughs> we're going to be using... Cool Perry. So I've written very Perry because I guess I got confused. But basically, very Perry is the Pantone of the year for 2022. And that's why I chose the Cool Perry to start off with. Now I'll go through how I did this for this card very slowly. And then I will speed it up for the rest of them. So the main thing you want to do is to add your IPA or your blending solution to the top half of your card first. So at least half of the card first. So this is what's going to allow your colors to move. Then once I have a good layer of that down, I add the color that I'd like, in this case, the Cool Perry, and I'm putting it all over. Now this Cool Perry is a lighter tone than the other ones we're gonna be using. So you kind of need to build it up a little more just to get that color a bit darker. Now I am using this We Are Memory Keepers uh, airbrush marker tool. I don't even think this is available anymore, but I will link the Tim Holtz air blower tool that you could use and it works just as well. Now, once I've built up that color on the top half, then I made three dots in the center with the color, and then I added three dots of the brass and a bit of the blending solution too, and that's where I'm gonna build up my brass color in the center or like the bottom um, three quarter section of the card. So this, this is where I'm gonna build up that nice shiny crystally geode color that you normally get. So you get your beautiful color and then you have this like edge of metallic, glittery, shiny, you know, all that nice goodness that, that you have at the end of that color. So that's what I'm trying to create here. So as you can see, I'm adding a lot of that brass and I'm building it up. And as I'm doing this, I'm adding the color to the top half and then I'm adding the blending solution and blowing that downwards. So that creates that line between the color and the brass. So that's what you want. You really want that line. You don't want everything to blend together. And this is why I mentioned the Tim Holtz mixatives would not work because they'll just create a shimmer with your color. You want that metallic color to show out or sorry to show through. Now I keep mentioning the Tim Holtz colors or the um, the alloys mainly because if you can't get a hold of this brass pinata ink, which is pretty much I've only found it available on Amazon, that's the other way you could go. Here you can see I built up that amethyst in the exact same way. And then I'm gonna take that sailboat blue, which is a really nice blue color. If you wanted, you could add some monsoon and I think this would look really nice with the sailboat blue and monsoon. I just don't have the monsoon on hand. So this made a really nice background as well. Like I said, I'm just building up that brass in the center to the bottom three quarters of that uh, panel there. And that's where I'm getting that geode kind of look. So now I'm using what would have to be my most favorite color of alcohol ink, which is Stream. This is a nice vibrant, vibrant emeraldy type green, and it just looks really nice with this brass pinata color or any of the alloys. It just stands out so nicely and works perfectly for this geode or faux geode look. Now to really um, make this look, have, have more of that geode look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some embossing, some heat embossing, and I'm going to be using this Encore Metallic Gold Pigment Ink Pad, and I'm just 
smushing it on to this panel here just along that brass area and that's why I chose the metallic gold so it would kind of blend in you could just use clear Versa Versamark ink, but I just felt this just added a bit more, especially because I'm going to be adding this Zing Gold Glitter Embossing Powder. You could use any gold glitter embossing powder you wanted. This was just what I had on hand, and it's very nice and glittery. That's mainly why I chose it. Now you can see I have straight edges because of that ink pad. So I have to get rid of those. In order to do that, I'm taking a dry brush, so there's nothing on this brush, and I'm just kind of brushing off a bit of those lines and making them a bit more uh, dra jagged and rounded so that it looks a bit more natural. And I keep doing that and just tapping off the excess amount of glitter or embossing powder there until I'm satisfied with the look. And then I will just heat it with my heat tool. Now do keep in mind that you have to be careful. This is Yupo, it is not just plain cardstock. So you'll see I'm constantly putting the heat on the panel and then moving it away, putting it on, moving it away. And this just prevents that panel from kind of melting. And once all is said and done, you can see you get such a nice look and it just creates another layer there for you. You've got your beautiful color, you've got that pinata brass, um, alcohol ink and then you've also got that glittery embossing powder which really just adds to the look entirely now if you wanted you could also maybe use some glue and some glitter some gold glitter and that would create just another layer of like niceness and shininess to make this a bit more geode looking i didn't do that but i mean go ahead and try it and definitely if you do please let me know i would love to see how those turn out now all I have left to do is kind of cut down my panels to side, to size, sorry. It's like I can't talk this year. <laughs> Anyways, so I cut them all down to, si down to size and I took the little strips that I cut off and I kept them aside. I'll show you what I do with those later. Later, <laughs> hint, hint, I use them on the inside of the card. Now I've taken this Thinking of You um, die, which is the Concord and Ninth um, Thinking of You dies. It comes as a set with a stamp. And I've cut them out of blue and white cardstock and kind of layered them together there in an offset fashion, along with some curvy leaves using the Pink Fresh Studio curvy leaves dies with some gold shimmer vellum. And now you don't need too much. I just use those curvy leaves for a bit of interest. You could have just put the sentiment on there alone because we have a lot going on on the background there. And you really don't want to cover up too much of that beautiful alcohol ink that you've spent all that time on making in the background. Now for the next card, I use the Simon Says Stamp Thinking of You die and the Spellbinders Handing You a Smile dies. So the Thinking of You die for my sentiment, I'm basically cutting that out of some Simon, sorry, some Sizzix Opulent Gold Mirror cardstock and I'll be backing that onto some vellum. And then I've got the Handing You a Smile dies from Spellbinders. Now these are really nice. There's some beautiful flowers in this and I just wanted like a nice tall flower to use on this because it's a bigger panel. It's the five by seven inch panel. And so I'm gonna assemble these flowers. I've made them mainly white because I want them to stand out on that emerald or stream colored background. And I've added just a little hint of gold which also just brings out that brass in that background as well along with the gold that's gonna be in the sentiment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble these. I'm using some foam squares to kind of pop up these little center pieces and that's just gonna again add a bit more dimension and just add a little bit more to the card. So you've not only got a difference in textures with the smoothness of the alcohol ink and the roughness of the embossing powder, but you've also got dimension with different layers of your die cuts that we're adding here. So for this thinking of you die, it doesn't come with a shadow die. So what I did was I just glued it down onto some vellum and then I just did some good old fussy cutting to cut around that sentiment. Now I found that this look worked the best because you have that beautiful sentiment and then you also have the vellum which allows a bit of a see-through to the background that you created with that um, with those alcohol ink. So I, you know, I tried a few different things but I've got to say this was my favorite and it worked out very nicely to show that emerald and brass through the vellum there. Now I'll just mention quickly you have to be careful with this die because there are two little dots for the eyes and you'll see I missed one but I think I fixed it afterwards. Um, anyway so I've cut down my panel like I said kept those strips and now I'll just attach this sentiment. So this is why I kept that bit of white at the bottom. I wanted to make sure that there wasn't 
too much going on and that I still had a bit of room to add my sentiment dyes and all the, these other little um, features like these flowers that I wanted. If you wanted, you just could go ahead and make the whole background a nice geode color and you don't have to add all these extra elements. I mean, it's completely up to you. You can take this idea and run with it. You can make the whole panel like that. You can make just a section. Maybe you could cut it down and use it on another card. I mean, my favorite uh, saying is the possibilities are endless and in crafting, that's always the case. So it took a little bit of time to get these flowers on because you do have to keep in mind where I'm attaching them with that glue is on that textured portion where the embossing powder is. So you might have to hold it down for a little bit, maybe use a block and put it on top of it to make sure that it really sticks. I did kind of have to add glue a couple times just to make sure it was good and on there. If your stems are a little thicker, you could just use some of that one eighth of an inch um, strong double sided score pal adhesive and that would work perfectly fine here. And since my flowers have dimensions, dimension, I just stuck this straight flat onto the panel there because I think I've got enough going on. So moving on to the next card, I'm going to do a little bit of a different technique here. I'm using some Spellbinders Lavender Pastel Foil along with the Pink and Main Hello um, die here and Shadow die. So I've cut out the Shadow from White Cardstock, also the Main die from White Cardstock, and I want to add this foil to the Hello. But I'm going to use my, um, my foiling system, my glimmer system to do this. And mainly what you want to do is heat up that Pink Fresh Studio solid plate. Once it's heated, put down your foil and your sentiment that's been die cut and then a scrap piece on top. Otherwise, it's going to get all over your shim and then heat it, put it through your die cutting machine, peel it off and you can see you get a nice foil die cut. Now, the other way to go about this would be to actually use that foil to just foil like a blank piece of white cardstock and then you could have cut it with the um, with the cutting die and you would have got the same result. No difference, it just it was really up, up to you what you wanna do. So I went ahead and attached that to the shadow and then put that on the front of the card. And for that one, I didn't add much more. I felt that that was good enough. And you can also, you can also see that I turned this in a landscape position versus being portrait so that it would have a bit of a different look. Now moving on, I used the Spellbinder Simple Sentiment Set to foil this hello. So it's actually hello sunshine, but I just wanted the hello portion. And when you do put this through your die cutting machine, it's gonna make an impression of the sunshine, which was okay for me because I'm gonna basically cut that off. Cause what I'm gonna do is kind of tuck this behind my die cut sentiment and you're not even gonna notice it was part of something else. So I'm using that uh, little banner die that comes with this set you could just cut it you know using your your um cutting machine guillotine cutter like i've got here whatever it is you have that works just use scissors whatever it totally works in any which way or form any way you want to do it there's always three or four different ways to do something you just pick what works for you right so for the main sentiment, I'm using the Pink Fresh Studio Hello Phrase Builder dies, and I'm just using that friend sentiment there. These dies are really nice because they all have a shadow with it, and I find that when you buy singular dies with a shadow, they cost a bit more than buying a set like this. So I just found that this was had a bit better had a better price point for me. Um, so I cut the friend out of some Sizzix Opulent Gold Mirror cardstock, which is one of my favorites, and I backed it on that vellum there, and don't forget that little dot for the eye. Now here's a little cool trick. This is some cool tack clear foam squares. Now I just, uh, you know, these are the last couple cards. Is this the last card? I can't even remember. This is the last card and I'm just getting sick and tired of trying to cut these little pieces of foam. So I got out my clear foam squares and these work perfectly on vellum. Like if you look really, really carefully, you can see it, but I have enough going on in my background that you're really not going to see that the foam squares. I mean, some people are a little more picky than others. It's really up to you, but I do recommend using these, they work really well. So you can see I added those Simon Says Stamp etched laurel leaves in glitter cardstock along with that hello that I cut out earlier and that one looks pretty good. So moving on to the inside, I didn't do all of the card insides in terms of sentiments, but I did add this little design which is just a quick and simple way to completely make your card complete to kind of transfer your design from the front of the card to the inside and just make it like a nice cohesive card. So what I did was I used those little strips which match the color of the alcohol ink on the front of the card 
And then I also added some of these Sizzix Opulent um, Gold Pearl Strips as well. These are actually the negative pieces from another project. And I just always keep them aside because they always come in handy. They're sitting on my desk and I thought, hey, I could use that with this too because they have that nice gold pearly shine to them. You could have just used plain cardstock. You could have cut it by hand. You didn't have to use it with a die and use the negative pieces. It's completely up to you. You might have something else lying around your desk space that you could have used instead of this. I mean, that's why I like to kind of keep my stuff out for a bit because then I, I always find ways to use it on the insides of my cards. So anyways, I've gone ahead and added those strips in an alternating fashion and just cut off the edges. For this one, I will do the sentiment inside and I'm using the Altenew and Grey Flowers stamps. Now for this one, I'll be doing my mask stamping, which I normally do using Versifying Clara Nocturne ink for my main sentiment. And then for that word beautiful, which is in a different font, I will use some Altenew Emerald ink, which is again going to match with the stream alcohol ink on the front. And that's the pretty simple inside of this card. So all that was left was to attach all of my card panels to the front. And as usual, in keeping with everything I did last year and the year before and the year before, we have to add some bling. So as you can see on the first card with the stream, I used some AB and Emerald uh, Crystal Lolly Beads. So those are the nail art gems that I get from Amazon, which I will link in my blog, which is also linked in the description below. And then for the rest of them, I pretty much added these Pink Fresh Studio Jewels. So they actually come in a set of 12. And I like the set because it's a nice variation of different colors. Um, the actual individual colors, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure that last one was like a lilac. This is more of like a bluey purple and they just go really nicely with the colors of alcohol ink that I chose and I found that it was really nice to add them onto the white to kind of bring that white into the colors of the rest of the card and it just kind of created a nice cohesive flow on that front of the card which I really liked. So I tried my best not to add too much. That's kind of my New Year's resolution to not add too many jewels because sometimes I just add way too much <laughs> but I mean to each their own. Whatever you like you can do right? So here is that panel that I turned sideways and did it in a landscape fashion. You can see I did do the inside of the card. I just left them blank because I'm not really sure where I'm going to be sending these or who they're going to go to. And you can see the sentiments thinking of you are pretty generic. I could put whatever I wanted on the inside there. I figured this design would actually work great for thank you cards right after Christmas as well, right? So anyways, those are my four beautiful faux geode cards. I hope that you guys liked them, that you felt inspired to take something from this video and use it for yourself. And I would be so happy to see anything that you do create. Go ahead and link it up in the, um, or at least put a link in a comment below. I would so love to see what you guys create and what you've been inspired to create from what I've been showing you here. Um, again, I hope you all have a great 2022. I hope this year is much better than the last. It might start a bit rough, but hopefully it gets better throughout the summer. And I hope you all had a great vacation, a great Christmas. And yeah, I guess that's it. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like my video. Go ahead and check out my blog in the links below. There's a whole bunch more inspiration up on my blog there. And if you get a chance, please follow me on Instagram. My um, my account is at Designs by D and I have all of my cards up there along with all of my reels that you might want to take a look at too. They're just short forms of this long tutorial that you get kind of the gist of how I put the cards together. <laughs> So I hope you all have a great weekend and I'll see you again next time. Bye.